Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats in accordance with the schedule circulated in my letter of 29th of March this year. Uh, we will now open uh, for Mrs. Helen Clark from New Zealand to give her contribution to the morning's informal dialogue, including some further remarks uh, on her written vision statement. Mrs. Clark, please. Uh, thank you, President of the General Assembly, for initiating this uh, process. Can I acknowledge all uh, ambassadors and members of the diplomatic corps here and uh, members of civil society too. And it's a good opportunity for me to talk about the uh, vision statement which I presented and tell you why I believe I have the skills and experience necessary to come forward for the position of UN Secretary General. I'm greatly honoured to have been put forward as the New Zealand candidate with the full support of the government and the full support of the New Zealand Parliament across all political tendencies. First, I want to tell you a little bit about my story and what brought me to this place. I grew up on a backcountry farm on an unsealed road in New Zealand, and I learnt from my parents values which I think are essential to leadership. They're about being ambitious but realistic, and about being hardworking and resilient when the times get tough. Many in my family and my local community fought and were killed in World Wars I or II. And so, like other New Zealanders of my generation, I was brought up to have deep respect for the United Nations and for the important role it was given in the Charter to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war. I'm very proud that New Zealand was a founding member of the UN and has a long tradition of support for it. I also grew up in a society which prioritised opportunity and fairness for everybody. And throughout my life, I've done my best to find ways to overcome injustice and inequality wherever I have encountered them. The first cause I became actively involved in as a young person was the movement against South African apartheid. Apartheid was a unique, pernicious and systematic form of discrimination which stripped people of their dignity. Its end, to which the UN contributed a great deal, was a major achievement of the late 20th century. My commitment to social justice at home and abroad led me to a 27-year parliamentary career, culminating in nine years as Prime Minister of New Zealand. And since then, I've been here in New York as administrator of UNDP for seven years. So I've met and worked with many of you in this room. In my different capacities over many, many years, I've been welcomed in many of your countries, indeed around two-thirds of them. I've met many of your presidents, prime ministers and ministers over many years, and I've listened to and learned a lot from them. I've also visited many communities struggling with poverty and conflict. Everywhere, I've been inspired by the determination of people to strive for a better life for their families, no matter how steep the odds against them were but their determination alone can't produce progress. So here I want to talk about the great importance of the role of the UN. As around our world, so many people look to us collectively here with hope and expectation that we will strive to help overcome conflict, achieve sustainable development and reduce inequality. And we look to the UN to bring us together around the common cause of building a better, a fairer, and a safer world. 70 years on from the UN's creation, there are serious challenges which are testing its capacity to deliver. The problems are getting harder to solve, and the opportunities to do so are more difficult to grasp. But we have to strive to do our best through ever closer collaboration and dialogue and through building the broadest partnerships we can. So I see the years ahead as vital for renewing the UN's capacity to deliver. Without doubt, the UN has contributed to largely ending conflicts between nations. It has supported development and prioritised the eradication of poverty. It has deepened respect for human rights, including for gender equality. 
and it has helped to rein in the nuclear arms race. Of course, there have been failures and bleak moments, but we should acknowledge the organisation's fundamental strengths and then build on them. All my life, I've been deeply committed to the ideals of the Charter. I see them as enduring, but since they were drafted, the nature of the challenges confronting the UN have changed a great deal. So the responsibility is to adapt and modernise our organisation so it is fit to tackle the issues of today and tomorrow. And that responsibility falls to member states and it falls to the Secretary General as leader of the organisation. I'm optimistic that if we do adapt, that together with the unique convening power and global coverage of the UN will enable it to be both relevant and more effective. In my vision statement, I set out some of those challenges we face. There's a long list running from the perpetuation of extreme poverty, the protracted conflicts, the terrorism, the violent extremism, the displacement crisis across the continents, the pandemics, the impacts of climate change and the resource shortages. We all know what is happening. Now we need to focus on what we are doing about it and to shift the focus from solving problems after they have arisen to helping to the, prevent them from occurring. So how to deliver results? As member states, you have agreed on visionary and ambitious agendas and goals. 2030 agenda stands out as a major achievement of 2015, along with the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. And I'm strongly committed to driving progress on these and the other major agreements of last year at Addis Ababa and at Sendai. On climate change, I believe particularly urgent action is needed. Poor and vulnerable countries need support to build resilience to what is happening to the climate. We face worsening weather for decades. The adaptation challenge is very, very great. But whatever the problems we're trying to solve, the chances of succeeding are better if we can pull all the strengths of the organisation together. All my life I've fought for gender equality and for women's empowerment. And as Secretary General, I will certainly be ensuring that the UN prioritises the full and equal participation of women in decision making, economies and societies, and here in this building. I'm a long-time advocate of the importance of harnessing the potential of youth as a huge force for good in our world, provided youth are given the opportunity to contribute and to engage. So, how can the UN best deliver in these areas? Well, it must be practical and it must be effective. I see the incoming Secretary General needing to update the administration and make the full use of new technologies in doing so. I think the UN can become more effective in delivering to member states. It can be a better place to work. It must be transparent and frank about what it can and can't do. It must work closely with member states to see that the resources given to it are prioritised around where the biggest difference can be made. I do think transparency should be a guiding principle for the way in which the SG relates to the Security Council, the General Assembly and to Member States. I have led UNDP to its current ranking as the most transparent development organisation in the world. And I want to bring that approach to the UN too. All parts of the organisation need to embrace open, modern management practices and governance. And I do believe in investing in our staff as our greatest asset. I have spoken in my vision statement about the importance of anticipating and responding better to the serious challenges around our world. The UNDP experience has given me so many insights into how the impressive global presence the UN has could be better coordinated. I would want to prioritise two uh, partnerships with the regional organisations which play such an important role and indeed to seek to bring around the table everybody who can help tackle the great challenges that we confront. I believe the UN needs a proven leader who's pragmatic and effective. And I think I've shown those qualities during nine years as a Prime Minister and seven years as Administrator. Coming from New Zealand shapes who I am and what I have to offer. 
I come from a highly culturally diverse country in a region of great diversity. I am acutely aware that what the UN does or doesn't do affects the everyday lives of countless millions of people. And on that note, I want to end with a Māori proverb from my country which says, hey aha, te mea nui o te ao. What is the most important thing in the world? Hey tangata, hey tangata, hey tangata. It is people, it is people, it is people. And we owe it to people everywhere to make this organisation the best it can possibly be in building our shared future. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Clark, for her opening statement.